Today is October 22nd, 2015, and today Hillary Clinton testified for the Benghazi hearings, and I just want to bring the attention to the public that what Hillary did with her her cover-up of Fukushima is is going to be a million times worse than what she did at Benghazi, whatever she did there. And talk about trying to find the truth. It's hot, kind of hard to find the truth when a, a lot of the information on Fukushima is buried. But I just want to do a little review of her emails that I came across and investigated. And... It's kind of very hard to kind of piece together here, so kind of just bear with me. Now check out this um, definition of a red herring. Now this video is going to be called Hillary Clinton's Fukushima Red Herring. So uh, what is a red herring? It says over here definition. In novels usually mystery novels, a red herring is an extraneous character meant to divert the reader's attention from the true killer or robber. Okay. And it looks like here's some words that might describe it. Misleading. Bullshit. Lie. Red herring. Distraction, cover up, decoy, subterfuge. Red herring, something used to divert attention from the real matter, issue, or object. A dead red herring was often used to confuse or test the scent of a hunting dog. Red herrings were often used by jailbirds to mislead hound dogs that were tracking them. The expression red herring refers to something that is misleading. Now that is, I guess to say the least, what Hillary Clinton has done. So what we want to do is close that window out and try to get a quick overview of what I'm trying to get at over here. Now Hillary Clinton, she signed a secret pact after Fukushima because Japan, the Japanese food coming out of Japan would not have uh, passed the mustard on our allowable amounts of radiation in our food. So she took a trip over there and she did a pact with her counterpart to uh, raise the allowable amount of radiation. Now, it states that, let me bring this out a little bit, now the United States came up with the decision to downplay Fukushima, says Gunderson, who is a well-known um, person in the nuclear facilities that try to bring a heads up to what's going on in nuclear but he told in an interview that high paid people he knows in the State Department said Hillary Clinton signed a pact with her counterpart agreeing for the United States to continue buying food from Japan despite that food not being properly tested for radioactive materials so we are not sampling the food coming into the United States. He repeats, the United States has come up with the decision at the highest levels of the State Department, as well as other departments who made the decision to downplay Fukushima.
Now, here's a deadline that just came out, or a headline that just came out, and it's saying that the West Coast is going to be hit with 8 trillion becquerels of cesium by 2016, nearly equal to the fallout deposited in, on Japan. Now, if you go into the State Department, you can do this. It's the U.S. State Department. Freedom of Information Act and all you have to do is go in the search box and within the Clinton emails for I searched red herring and nine entries came up and the most interesting one is this first one it says subject matter Japan on March 21st and it's from PIR Prenis and it's blocked out. Now it's to H, which I'll bet that's to Hillary. Now the original message comes from Evergreen and it's to PIR and there's copies to this Huma Abedin who I know is been in the mail or in the news and so this is coming from Hillary the original message is from from Evergreen and just remember that name because we don't know who that is but I found something that might give it away who the original message I think is actually coming from Hillary and it's from I bet you this is it this is the email address I think no this is all speculation um it says from now on I'm going to pose all questions to you in this false choice frame all right Now, it says there's two options, number one and number two. It says number one is a non-starter red herring, so two it is. So if there's one is the red herring, it's supposed to be, according to that dictionary, the def definition, that num the red herring is the false narrative for two if that makes sense so I kinda think that's kinda very strange that they're uh, uh, they're saying that they ha they're you, it's, a, it's a red herring what's up with that? I don't know what the heck is up with that and the second one now these are replies and then number three now originally it's talking about NY or New Yorker is getting done tomorrow I think this is to Hillary Now I have no idea. This is the, the the subject is Japan, so I don't know what else could they be talking about. And it actually is ten days after the um, Fukushima earthquake and tsunami. So this is what they got to be talking about, whatever it is they're talking about. But basically, they're telling me that from now on, I'm going to pose all questions to you in this false choice frame. Well, when you have red heron and false in the same email that has to do with Japan, it sounds like there is a cover-up of some sort. Now, what is one and what is two? 
they're blocked out. The emails to these guys are blocked out too. Unless these, I think this is the second box is the email address. But check it out. From PIR, this Prianus. Let's bump over to who that is. Prianus. And that's this guy right over here. Philip Rains. He's on Twitter. But his Twitter account is protected. You can't you don't have access to his tweets unless you are confirmed to have access to it. I don't know. But his tweets are protected. And let's look up who this guy is. Philip I. Rains is this guy. And he joined the State Department as a senior advisor to the United States Secretary of State Hillary Clinton when she was sworn into office in 2009. He was later promoted to the position of Deputy Assistant Secretary of State. So this, this is who we're talking about who she's sending these emails to. Now here's something that you want to look up is SBU. It refers to sensitive but classified. It's a US designation of information. Sensitive but unclassified. Now, let's go over here. Here's a comment. From someone that was talking about the emails. And it says, this comment is, this is awesome. Did anyone else notice that there were two different usernames associated with H? And who is Evergreen? Now over here, this person replied, it said Evergreen is Hillary's secret service code name. Keep that in mind. So in April 2015, Melissa Dykes reported the media propaganda arm of the administration pushed the idea that radiation from Fukushima was low risk and you could swim in the ocean for six hours every day for a year and receive a dose no more than a thousand times less than a dental x-ray. Melissa called BS then, as did the rest of us, and continually reports coming out of Japan indicate the media controlled by this administration is lying. However, what's with a little radiation? So... Here is a presentation by this Fairwinds chief engineer, again, nuclear expert Arnie Gunderson, claiming that there's plenty to generate concern over. This is the catastrophe is far from over, and the Japanese government and TEPCO, the Tokyo, Tokyo Electric Power Company, pushed to decommission the plant in 30 years. Okay, according to... Gunderson, the problems that exist still that will last decades is that three core nuclear cores of the Fukushima Daiichi are in direct contact with the groundwater. A problem that the nuclear power designers never anticipated. Units 1, 2, and 3 were destroyed, allowing the formation of holes and cracks, which the containment units breached. Groundwater is allowed to come into contact with the nuclear cores. 32,000 tanker trucks of radioactive waste have leaked into the Pacific Ocean with the groundwater continuing to leak in and out at a rate of about 300 tons per day. More than 1,500 days have passed and there's no end in sight of them stopping it. The ice wall is a complete failure, meaning 
that the cesium strontium plutonium from Fukushima will bleed into the Pacific for decades due to unmitigated groundwater flows. There's constraints of the press by the Japanese Government Secrecy Act that continue to hide the full human, financial, and, and environmental costs of the disaster. And the strontium-90 concentration levels outside the destroyed plant spiked 1,000% in three months from April 2015 to July 2015. It's getting worse. And what that means is cancer is going to go up. Nuclear science experts were clearly concerned that radioactive fallout from the disaster would not merely spread to the U.S. West Coast but cause a spike in thyroid cancer. It's there. All right, here is another very long PDF. And this is like 455 pages, and I can't think of the title, but that's the PDF right there. And it starts out with a lot of blacked out and redacted emails. But it starts off for the protracted event staffing for nuclear safety team staffing for Japanese earthquake document. So let's go down and I'll show you a couple things that I kind of looked at that I want you to see and let me know what you think about it. So we got to go down to page 12. And this subject is, now they're trying to tell you they don't have a clue on what's going on or what had happened in Fukushima in Japan. And the subject is isotope data from air samples taken in Japan. We've got inside the issue recovery efforts, recovery efforts for Fukushima. Food contamination around Fukushima requires countermeasures, it says. And it's a lot of blacked out stuff. Kathy, is Jack Foster looking into additional detail on the information below with respect to reported contamination in spinach and milk? What actions the Japanese are taking and also are these actions consistent with what the NRC would recommend? So they know there's some contamination in the food. A lot of blacked out stuff. A lot of information that is being kept from us. Now they're talking about here the subject is the Fukushima 4 fuel pool. And 
now over here the subject is Fukushima 4 fuel pool impact of dry pool so I think that means that there's no water in the fuel pool and they're discussing on how many assemblies there are although they're saying it's enclosed is a pretty good no leak case for Fukushima number four they say if Fukushima unit number four was uncovered in a week it was not a simple boil off and it looks like here's the bundle masses looks like that's uranium neptonium maybe plutonium discharges so they think they are trying to calculate something over here which I have no clue they're really concerned about the fuel pool can anyone confirm the numbers and age of the fuel in spent fuel pool 4 alright so let's go all the way down to 364 they're talking about there's an estimate of 56 probability of an early containment failure They're talking about MOX fuel and the plutonium. says the attached RES response to the request to provide a realistic up-to-date estimation of source terms for dose projections to address potential future potential radiological releases from the Fukushima 1 reactor and the spent fuel number 4 spent fuel pool Alright, here's an interesting one here. This is uh, the subject is the Operation Tomodachi. This is when um, we sent our military to go help out. And uh, there was a plume that hit them. And a lot of people got sick. But the, uh, the government says that everybody was fine. So 
if you want to look at what happened there, I guess you can't because it's all blacked out for the, there's the Operation Tomodachi, which is just sad that we send our military to go help and when they get in trouble themselves, we can't even help them ourselves. Now here's some interesting stuff over here. It's talking about the reactor one core damage partially fuel partially or fully exposed. Reactor two core damaged fuel partially or fully exposed. Number three core damage, fuel partially or fully exposed, and number four, reactor four, I guess it was defueled before the accident is what they're saying, although the fuel spent fuel pool has a low water level, Right, on this page they're talking about 200 to 300 pieces of radiation measuring equipment and a US expert on radiological tolerance of food to travel to Japan for consultation DCCS Fukuyama asked that FDA and FSC communicate directly. There's the FDA. Alright, here's another email that I found that the subject is Japan for March 18th and it's to Hillary, the big H. And let's read what this states. That the guy that sent this email, Mikhail, sounds like he talked to a friend of his in Brussels who is familiar with the Chernobyl, coordinated the team lead members who coordinated Chernobyl. Now, it says that I asked him to explain what was happening and what was the absolute worst case scenario. His explanation was helpful and assuring from all fronts. He's been watching the events in Japan very closely and he believes he has spoken with colleagues around the world. Bottom line is that while there is no doubt a serious event 
it will have minimum impact even if there is an entire meltdown of all the core materials. He said the worst case, all containment structures would collapse and otherwise be destroyed. The nuclear materials contained within whose structures would ignite and there would be an explosion and nuclear particles would be dispersed into the atmosphere. Anywhere in within 10 to 12 mile radius of the explosion would be in danger if at the time of the explosion they inhaled air containing the material. The material itself would be rapidly dispersed significantly limiting its impact to a small area and not for example endangering Tokyo. The site would be contaminated and the core materials would take a number of years to cool down but the affected area would be very small and indeed could be cleaned. Since these reactors were 40 years old and scheduled to be taken offline, the experts that the long-term impact to Japan's energy supply to be minimal. Key here is those operating within 10 to 12 miles of the plant to take all precautions against inhaling the contaminated air by wearing protective clothing. Now this guy is totally all wrong because obviously that this is having a bigger impact on the world than we know and he knows and even more than the big H Hillary knows and to come to conclusion on this videotape my whole thing with this is Hillary Clinton is responsible for poisoning millions and millions if not billions of people in this world because of this raising allowable amounts of radiation in the food coming out of Japan where the stuff should be tested and if it's not safe it should be stopped. We shouldn't be consuming this stuff and that is exactly why I stopped eating seafood years ago and stopped eating west coast produce and uh, being concerned enough to try to figure out what the hell's going on over there since nobody else seems to give a uh, a Fukushima. So that's it. When more emails are given out, hopefully they're going to not um, redact all of it and it's going to be a slip and we might be able to find out what's going on over there. But until then, you got to keep looking away and I should say we should be more looking into what's going on because it might have been a forgotten thought four years ago but it's it's literally killing the planet the seafood contaminating the soil the meltdowns will continue the water will still keep flowing underneath there for the next 10,000 20,000 years and by then people will say well it doesn't matter because I'm not gonna be around why should I care well the reason why I care is because you gotta do it for the future the people that will be here and obviously Hillary doesn't ca care about the people today or uh, the future uh, generations and I'd be curious to know if Obama's eating uh, seafood is Hillary eating seafood if th are they eating this stuff does anybody know out there because if they're not eating it that's got to be telling you something. Now according to Gunderson, in April, one month after the powerful tsunami and earthquake that hit Japan, Gunderson said that Hillary Clinton signed a pact with Japan that she agreed that there's no problem with Japanese food supply and we will continue to buy them so we are not sampling food coming in from Japan. What I want to know is who's responsible for raising allowable amounts of radiation in our food? Is it the FDA? Is it the US Department of Agriculture? Or is it the Secretary of State? Does she have that power to unilaterally raise that amount? But I'll show you this next email. I think this is when she actually took the trip. And last but not least, I think I might have found it. And here is, I think, her Japan visit where she went over and raised the allowable amount of radiation right here. 
it's sent to H Hillary again from this Kurt Campbell and basically it says however I believe the secretary should consider going to Japan for a brief stop next week to do several things hint hint underscore our commitment to Japan and manifest it more publicly for all we are doing and do all this other stuff that makes it look like you care or you worry thank the embassy and military relief team meet some of the displaced and speak publicly to the Japanese people it says here we can do this in one day and have a an histor an historic impact oh that is really going to be a historic impact uh, big H quite seriously given the stakes and gravity of the situation I could be wrong but I think this is when she did sign the pact right there the biggest mistake in human history and this is the reason why all our cancers are going up thanks to HCR Hillary Rodham Clinton